Recently, we've been hearing from some airline managements, and in particular, regional airline managements, about a pilot shortage. They're starting a buzz about Washington, talking to Congress and the administration about relaxing the newly implemented rest rules, as well as revisiting the minimum qualification rules that they helped create, but are now saying are creating a pilot shortage. These airlines would like the public to believe that all their recent problems with the weather, delays, and cancellations are due to these new rules or to not having enough pilots. And just last week, United announced it'll close its hub in Cleveland and slash flying for its regional partners there because of the fee for departure carriers not being able to find enough pilots. As you and I both know, this is simply not the case. So here's the truth. There is currently no near-term shortage of trained and qualified pilots. Instead, what our industry is experiencing is a pay and benefit shortage. There are a few examples today of airlines having trouble finding pilots, but it's not because the pilots don't exist. As we know, there are plenty of pilots available here in the U.S., but the airlines have to be willing to pay for the professionalism, expertise, airmanship ability, and judgment that those pilots possess. In addition, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of professional U.S. pilots who want to be flying for U.S. carriers but are not. Starting with, of course, are more than 1,000 furloughed pilots. As for the others who want to be flying here, they are forced to work overseas, flying in the Middle East or Asia or elsewhere because they can't find a living commensurate with their expertise and experience with the low wages that some regional airlines are paying. I've talked to dozens of these expat pilots and consistently they tell me that they would jump at the chance to come home if our domestic airlines offered better pay, work conditions, and job security. This debate, created by regional airline management, reminds me of the days before the ALPA One Level of Safety campaign that raised the level of safety of the regional airline industry. Prior to 1994, many of our regional airlines operated to a set of regulations that provided a lower margin of safety than the mainline carriers. Many of the regional airlines at that time used cost as a justification for operating to a more lax regulatory environment and a lower level of safety. It seems that they are using the same cost argument now. So here are the facts. The average starting pay for a first officer at a regional airline in the U.S. is just $22,000 a year plus benefits. $22,000 a year for a pilot who may have $100,000 or more invested in his professional education. Starting pay at Delta is $62,000 a year plus benefits. But at Emirates, new hire co-pilots receive $82,000 per year plus a housing allowance and other extraordinary benefits. And Cathay Pacific pays new co-pilots $72,000 a year plus a similar generous housing and benefits package. The issues facing the regional industry come down to simple economics. For regional pilots, your managements are whipsawing each other to win flying with their mainline partner by bidding the lowest contract. Once they win the flying, they realize they cannot make a profit, so they turn to labor to make concessions. Ask yourself, how many times have we seen this play out in the regional industry? This model is not sustainable. With the upcoming wave of retirements at the mainline carriers, changes need to be made to prevent a possible future pilot shortage. Mainline airlines and their regional partners need to work together to negotiate contracts that work for both sides and provide pay and benefits as well as a career path that not only are commensurate with the pilot skills and experience, but also attract qualified prospective pilots to the industry. As I recently told many of you during the January meeting in Herndon, I have been working to help foster these discussions and I am committed to continuing to keep 
industry leaders fully informed of the real issues and to negotiate contracts that benefit all ALPA pilots today and in the future. Our government can help airline profits by implementing pro-growth aviation policies that reduce the tax burden on airlines. Congress needs to defend the newly implemented pilot training and fatigue rules. And while they're still at it, they must reverse the bad judgment that allowed the cargo carve out in the newly implemented flight and duty time rules. The U.S. airline industry deserves a level playing field so that we can compete fairly in the international marketplace that is saturated with state-sponsored foreign carriers. So this myth about a pilot shortage, we know it doesn't exist. Not yet. The shortage we do face is in the pay and benefits necessary to attract well-trained professional airline pilots to regional airlines. We will continue to work with your elected leaders to find solutions with airline CEOs from the regionals and main lines that will present the best economic solutions and strengthen our airline brands. Stronger contracts and stronger brands will ensure that all pilots are paid commensurate with the work they do. We stand ready to assist.